while I was about to start filming, but someone decided he is going to sit right on my book and groom himself, yeah. Thanks Gandalf, really appreciate it. Hello everyone! I'm actually filming with my new lights today, finally. It took me a while to get around to it. I've had all these other things happening and I've made myself sit down today and actually do some filming. Yay! So excited. I decided today to do some colouring but with a twist. So I've gotten this book here, which I've had for years and years, Johanna Basford's Magical Jungle. I've really only done a little bit in it. Now I find that the paper in these books is fabulous for dry media, so it's, it's this incredible smooth paper. And it's really nice for ink pens and for coloured pencils. But it really is pretty impossible to do watercolours or anything with water in here. I did try. <laughs> I've barely done anything in this book because I may have stuffed up the first page. Can you see how wrinkly that is? I suppose it's not that bad, but I don't know. It's only a cellulose paper, so it doesn't work the way that I want watercolour paints to work. So this is the, actually the only one I've done, and I started this one, but it just leaves the paper all wrinkly, and it's super annoying because the designs are on both sides of the paper and so if you for example did watercolor on one side then it makes this side wrinkly so it's really hard to do colored pencil or something like that so I went through and I picked this design and I actually traced it onto some watercolor paper so I've got it here this is 100% cotton Canson Moulin du Wah. I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly it's my absolute favorite paper and of course they've gone and discontinued it so I do have quite a lot of it and I thought well I'm going to use it anyway because otherwise it's just going to sit there and be wasted and I traced it out actually onto some tracing paper sorry that was me rustling to get the tracing paper and because the book it's really really hard to sit a light pad inside and then trace over it and also there is this design on the back so that would also show through I grabbed a piece of tracing paper and I placed it on top and as you can see it's pretty um, there we go look you can see how easy it is to trace through you can use baking paper as well just be aware that it is waxy and I used a black colored pencil rather than a graphite pencil so that it doesn't smudge. Pens also smudge on it. But I did a quick trace and then I used my light pad and traced it onto this. But I thought today I would paint this with some watercolors. I've been dying to use my watercolor paints and I thought I would do something that's a little bit more complicated so I want, I'm going to color it in trying to stay within the lines as much as possible. There will be a few different techniques, I guess, that I will use that maybe aren't traditional watercolour techniques, but I'm just going to see what I come up with. Now, I was going to do the background, but I'm not entirely sure what colour to do it yet. I think I'll actually do the design first, and then decide if I'm going to leave it plain, or if I'll paint a light background onto the back. I think that's the best idea for this one. I am going to be using my collection of Sennelier watercolour paints which I've got off to the side and I decided not to show for now because I have promised you that I'm going to do a watercolour collection and it is coming, it just takes a little bit of time to film plus I've been feeling quite unmotivated and it is quite a struggle to record videos so I'm doing my best. I just really wanted to do some colouring and painting and so this video I think is going to come out before my watercolour collection does. But anyway, I basically went through and picked colours as I went. I did not have a plan for this at all. I just went in, looked at my colour swatch chart that I'd made and decided that the parrot on the right was going to be 
red and yellow and purple more in the warmer colors and then I will do some teal and green on the parrot on the left just for some cooler colors but also you'll see as I go through I do actually add colors from both birds to each other so that they kind of match together and I also didn't want to use every single color in my palette so I've gone relatively limited in the colors that I chose and have added little bits of each color to both parrots. I really love the turquoise colors they're so lovely but the Sennelier paints are made with a uh, honey humectant which keeps them very very soft and sticky in the palettes so my palettes which I've had for ages the paints are still not fully set and they're so easy to re-wet and they're incredibly vibrant I have heard a few people complain about Sennelier watercolors that they aren't that vibrant but I find that if you use them pretty much straight from the tube or the palette the half pan in this case I find that they're perfectly vibrant and they also are really really fantastic for layering so if you like to do glazing they are excellent for layering on top of each other and they become incredibly bright then as well so they're very versatile they're one of my favorite paints I really liked this design and when I was looking through the book trying to find some inspiration this is the one that jumped out at me it is quite complicated and using brushes is a lot more difficult than using a pen or a pencil so I did make a few mistakes going over the lines but otherwise it wasn't too difficult as you can see I was trying to mix in a few different colors and get a bit of a gradient and then in other areas I just painted flat washes mainly because the small areas were very fiddly and I was getting impatient so I just went flat colors it is and then quite often I would start with a lighter color and then drop in a darker color into it to mix as I went but with cotton paper like this it takes quite a lot longer to dry so you have time to actually add other colors to already wet colors and they will blend in together so much more easily than they do on regular cellulose paper which you will find gets quite patchy and will dry pretty quickly as the paint is absorbed directly into the paper whereas cotton water paper like this has a layer of what is usually gelatin and that stops the water and the paint from absorbing too quickly so it kind of slowly goes in and you will find that the paint sits a lot better on the paper rather than going into it and losing its vibrancy. Now I know leaves can come in many many colors but mine ended up all being shades of green. I didn't want to have too many colors competing with each other and also I wanted to have a nice green tropical background. So when I paint the flowers they don't all fight for your attention and the green will hopefully fade more into the background with the flowers popping out further along with the parrots as well being the center of attention and I just painted that branch with a couple of different browns trying to keep it darker on the bottom as you would imagine that's a shadier part of it but overall I really wasn't planning the color scheme I was making it up as I went along and making decisions when I'd painted one area as to what the other parts were going to be especially on the borders of the leaves some borders are dark and other borders are light
after much deliberation, I decided to put some gold shimmery paints in the background. It was just really, really stark white and I needed something. It's always a gamble as to whether the background's going to work or not. And this was, I don't know, not my favourite background in the world, but it was alright. And it does create a really pretty shimmer, which is very, very hard to record. But in real life, you can see the sheen quite well. And I think after this, I will move the paper a bit so you can see it. But it gave it kind of a old-fashioned sepia paper looking background. I don't know if it improved it or made it worse, but <laughs> there we go, I did it and it's too late now. And I just used a white gel pen to add a few highlights as I like to do at the end of my paintings, even though it's not a paint. Whatever. It's what I had at hand and it was the easiest thing to use. And here we are with the finished piece. I realised I'd missed a little bit up here, so I've just filled in those little gaps. I'm not sure if the gold's done anything for that background. Can you see it sparkling? Maybe I could have done different colours, but I didn't want to go too dark and take away from the overall pattern. This was really relaxing to do, although it was very fiddly. I don't know that I would really go out of my way to trace more designs onto paper. I think next time I'd probably just want to do my own design. But it was a good experiment and it was nice to actually do one of the Johanna Basford designs in watercolour on watercolour paper and not have it go all yucky like it does in the actual book itself. This paper is so good for not doing that. You can layer it. I really love the Sennelier paints on here. They've turned out really well. And because I used them neat, f straight from the palettes, I didn't really need to do a lot of glazing. Like sometimes if you start off with a light layer, then you will need to glaze over to build that colour up. But I find that the Sennelier paints are pretty vibrant when you use them straight from the pen. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And also, if you can hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And I will see you all again real soon. Swatch you later. Bye.